It's Thursday, May 11th. About a quarter till five. Uh, I've been home for about 30 minutes. But I'm definitely ready for a beer. And today, we have a beer from Monkish. It's a double dry hop called Le Spa. It is a 7.2%. I have had this before, so I know what I'm going or getting myself into. Can 5423. It's a tasty beer. <clears throat> ah, it smells really good. Yeah, look at that. It's beautiful color. Always, I, I I really enjoy the way hazies look. That cloudiness. It's amazing to me. Kind of looks like orange juice. Yeah, that's a really good beer. That's a really good beer. A really good aftertaste. So, one of the earliest uh, beers that changed my life uh, was there's two beers: Sam Adams Boston Lager, and then Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. And both those beers came at about the same time. I think I had the Boston Lager first, but I was still a teenager when I tried those, and that really opened my eyes to craft beer. Fast forward many years. Um, the next beer that really, really, really changed things, the Arrogant Bastard. That beer just opened up a whole new world of flavors that I didn't know existed. Um, from that moment on, it was find as many aggressive, crazy beers. Um, another game changer was I was really into at the time was Sierra Nevada Bigfoot Ale. I was really into uh, barley wines. <clears throat> I've moved away from them over the years, uh, but that one, like that, was my quest to find like the high alcohol, um, kind of yeah, just that style. I mean, remember trying Old Guardian and things like that. Just all the barley wines. I wanted to get, get as many barley wines as I could. Problem was, I started aging them, and that really killed, killed, killed them for me. Um, and I shouldn't have done that. Should have drank them all fresh. I still have a Bigfoot ale that's probably fifteen years old. Just sits there. I'll open it one of these days, but I probably won't drink it. Anyways, um. After that, um, we started getting into, there's, well, you know what? Hold on. Let me take a step back. Before Arrogant Bastard, I had a friend, my buddy Josh, who started working for a local beer distribution company and was able to buy a case of beer for 10 bucks. And he bought Anchor Steam and then Anchor Porter. And Anchor Porter was the introduction into porters and stouts we would get those beers and we'd go hang out on the beach at night and drink but that time right before arrogant bastard was also barley wine came in then arrogant bastard okay get the timeline straight scott then after that um started getting into the ipas started finding like indica ipa racer five you know some of those staples from some of the older breweries and along the coast of california but it wasn't until St. Archer came out with a double or their mosaic double IPA. And that opened a whole new world of juiciness that we didn't know existed. That mosaic hop was a game changer. And then um, it became a quest to find crazy, over the top, as high 
IBUs as you can find. We found that with um, was it who was it? It was hop shortage. 130 IBUs or whatever it was just crazy. Um, um, but that wasn't really what we were looking for. We really wanted something that tasted really good. And I just happened to go with a friend one day to Monkish and picked up really real hazy IPA many years ago and was just blown away by like how much juiciness and flavor was in a hazy IPA. I'd never had one up to that point, which is kind of why I keep going back to Monkish. It was the, my introduction into hazy and it was my introduction into like just phenomenal juicy low IBU. I thought everything had to be high IBU but realizing that low but super juicy was actually better than high IBU was a game changer for me. Now obviously the market is saturated with hazies and so I try to stick with companies that I know can produce good ones and then when I deviate away from that I'm usually very disappointed. Uh, you've seen just, I this is my, I think, episode 22 for me. And I've had uh, local craft brew. I've had, you know, Casa Agri on here. I've had Monkish. I've had Fieldwork on here. We've had Revision on here. I haven't touched on a lot of other ones. But I can tell you, out of all of those, I still come back to Monkish. I still think theirs is the top dog i can't get treehouse and all those other ones from back east unless i do beer trades and i am not about to do that stuff i don't want to devote that much time to my in my life to drinking beer even though i devote that time i don't want to ship things off and i don't want to deal with that so those ones are probably out of the picture for me which i'm okay with I, I have monkey, so I'm okay. I still read in their comments all the time. People ISO this and ISO that. I'm not in search of any of that. I just want to drink whatever monkey has I can get, and I want to buy it. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> it's like 8 o'clock. Uh, ate dinner. Sitting on the couch. And uh got a little too comfortable, fell asleep. <laughs> so I took a little nap. But we're back with our second beer and it's sticky traffic. This is a double dry hop, double IPA. It's got Nelson Sullivan, Citra, Mosaic, and Galaxy Hops. It's eight point four percent and it was canned. Let's see four twenty six. I hope it shows up. Oh, 4 or 5 after 3 p.m. Uh -huh. Sticky traffic. Nobody wants to be on the 4 or 5 after 3 p.m. <coughs> <sighs> Smells good. Smelly good. Or a nice beautiful color. Looks like a hazy. Yeah, that's a really good beer too. That's a really good beer. So you've got Le Apier and Sticky Travis. Sticky Traffic, the IPA, both very good beers. Can't go wrong with those choices. Nothing but juice. Ah, absolute juice. We'll see you all next time. We'll see you all Friday. 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 <laughs>